Maybe you heard about these ND filters. People say when you are a videographer and you want to create cinematic footage, you should use those. But what are actually these and should you really use them? Or is it just a myth and they don't really benefit you? So I have in my pack usually four sets of ND filters. I have a polarized filter, which is currently on the camera. Then I have two variable ND filters, which you can rotate to change the brightness of the filter. So as you can see, if I rotate this filter, it gets darker, brighter. Then I have another one, which is a bit stronger. And then I have a really dark ND filter. What's actually the purpose of an ND filter? You could just close your aperture, set it to F16, F22, and that's it. So actually, people say cinematic footage uses 24 frames per second. And in order to achieve this, you have to decrease the light that your camera reaches. You can imagine it like when it's a bright day out there, you also put on your sunglasses because there's some point where your pupils cannot get smaller to reduce the incoming light. It's still going to be bright. The same goes with your camera. You could reduce your aperture, but the light still will be very bright. Another point is it allows you to still shoot at 24 frames per second, also on a sunny day. So you can put on a strong ND filter, you can go out on broad daylight and you can still have 24 frames per second. Then with the wide aperture, you could set to f1.2, f1.8. You could still have this depth of field of your camera, of your lens, and still get these amazing shots. So when I shoot on a broad daylight, which is not the best because actually you should rather shoot during golden hour to get the best natural light, I set my ND filter to ND128 and also I have to reduce my aperture to f2.0, f2.8 to be able to shoot at 24 frames per second. What is actually cinematic footage or why 24 frames per second? Maybe you have seen some sports TV and there you see everything looks a bit surreal. That's because it's filmed in 60 frames per second. So you have a lot of pictures and the movement is very sharp. It's like you take a photo with very short exposure. There won't be any blur in there. In cinema films, you have a lot of blur per picture because you have only 24 pictures per frame. Every movement will be very blurry. So if I move my hand like this very fast, you will see that it's actually very blurry. If I would do this with 60 frames per second, you could see the individual images. So one thing we want to get is get this motion blur in our footage so it looks more cinematic. And then of course filming at a wide aperture allows you to get those amazing shots with deep depth of field. So a uh, variable ND filter gives you more flexibility because natural light can change. There can be clouds, it can be darker, brighter. You go into an interior room and it will be even darker and you need to make your ND filter brighter. That's why variable ND filters are very useful. There are also square ND filters, which are more fixed, but you cannot change them so quickly like a variable ND filter. As you can see, this ND filter is pretty large. It's actually a lot larger than the diameter of my lens. That's because ND filters can create a cross pattern, an X pattern, when you put them to the maximum, and that's something you don't want to have. In order to avoid this, you try to have the ND filter larger than your lens actually is, so it's not seeing the edges of the ND filter. Also another point is if you use a matte box on your camera and you stack everything on top, the edges might be visible of your ND filter, so it's better to go to a larger size. In my case, I have 77 millimeters for my 67 millimeter in order to have this leverage room. This will help me to prevent vignetting and the X pattern. Another point is you can use ND filters for time lapses. I see many beginners when they start doing time lapses, they just expose for a short amount of time. But there might be cases where you even put on an ND filter at night. Point is your lowest ISO setting can be only set so low, so you will have a maximum of illumination time in your footage. If you want to get these light stripes of scars, they might be still very bright and you might need to reduce the brightness of your image that you take. Of course, you could then reduce the aperture, but maybe you want to have this depth of field because you 
just film something where you're focusing on and you want to have the blur in the background of something else. Another point is if you use the highest aperture, it will also reduce your image quality. You get usually the best image quality of your lens in the middle area, one to two stops above your lowest F value. The ND1000 filter is useful if you do time lapses during the day. You can leave the aperture wide open, put on this ND filter, and then also set your illumination to like 10 or 20 seconds and get them this motion blur that I talked about before. Beginners usually would do short illumination times and then take pictures with a few seconds break in between, but then your time lapse will look more like a stop motion. If you have an ND filter on, you can increase the exposure time and this will allow you to get the motion blur. Then here, as you can see with my ND filters, they don't have any screw on mechanism. That's because they're magnetic. So I would recommend you to look for a magnetic system and those ND filters will allow you then that you can first stack them, but of course, keep in mind the vignetting. And then on the other side, you can easily switch them out. So if you film outdoors and yet you go into a dark room, you can just remove the ND filter and continue filming. Another thing you should get when you use an ND filter is a color checker. The point is ND filters mostly have a color cast. This can be either go into the red area or the green area or like purple. And then also depends on the intensity. So especially when you do professional work, do you want to get first to your base neutral color grade before you start the color grade? You want to adjust the colors to neutral. You can easily do this with a color checker. You can film it at the beginning of your scene. Then you can go into a video editing program like DaVinci Resolve then use the color tab in DaVinci Resolve, for example, to automatically adjust the colors. That can get you very quickly to a neutral result. Lastly, when you look at this ND filter, you might see there's something weird going on. There are these edges around here. It's kind of like a focus ring, and it is actually a focus ring. I put this around this ND filter, I glued it on, with super glue, be very careful that you don't ruin your ND filter. And this is because I created my own version of the Tilter Rig Mirage matte box or the small rig matte box where you can adjust the ND filter via focus motor. Actually, in my version, you can use the focus wheel of the DJI RS to adjust then the intensity of the ND filter. This saves me so much time, makes it a lot more convenient. I just need to hold the gimbal, rotate the wheel a bit to get a brighter or less brighter image. And it's really a time saver for me. If you want to know how you can do this by yourself, speed up your work, also save a bit of money, check out my video. The link is in the description below. See you in the next awesome video.